Hey everybody, this is Strange from the Hot Utils development team. I'm coming to you with a long overdue tutorial on loadouts and playgrounds. Hopefully I don't bore you too much with this. We're going to start at the very basic level and slowly progress into some of the more advanced features. Uh, let's start with a quick definition of what loadouts are if you're new to the Hot Utils tool or you're thinking of purchasing it. A uh, loadout in the game is a set of mods that can be play, applied to any character. Um, one of the drawbacks of this is it's very tedious. You have to create loadouts for every single character you have before you remod. Uh, you might move mods around to other characters and then you might apply one unit at a time to get your loadouts back on the original characters. Um, you'll quickly run out of space and creating these snapshots for every unit takes um, hours upon hours and is very hard to manage. Uh, loadouts in Hot Utils was one of the first features it launched with and a loadout is a snapshot of one or more units and the mods that were assigned to those units. Um, so you can create different types of snapshots. You can have a full roster snapshot um, and you would go into game and you would say you know record all the mods that are assigned to all my units and save that off into the Hot Utils database. You can then go in game, you can move your mods around all over the place and do whatever you want with it and then come back to the Hot Utils website and click the load button and then it would restore the mods to where they were when you created the snapshot. Um, you can do that for your entire baseline, you can also do it for a small subset of your units. Uh, for instance, if you're running uh, missions in LSTB or um, you have a separate loadout for DAC and TW, you can create a snapshot of just five units or 10 units, um, load that up for the, you know, your LSTB battles, uh, do your LSTB battles and then come back and load your loadouts for um, your GIC or your territory war. So what's Playground? Playground is our loadout editor that you can use through our web page to create loadouts outside of the game and then apply them within the game. Who's Playground for? Playground is for people who really want to get in-depth with their mods. It's not a easy one-click, um, create a, a fully automated loadout. You can see that with Mod Wizard. I'll create another video for that. But this is for someone who wants a little bit more control over their mods, who wants to specify um, maybe mod weights and mod targets, uh, and wants to spend a little bit more time getting a little more, more granularity into their modding. It's not a fully automated system. It's for a more advanced user. Uh, you have to spend a little time understanding all the features, but once you understand them, you can get a whole lot more out of it. So what are some of the key features? Um, First and foremost, you can manually edit your loadouts in Playground. Um, so if you don't use any of the other features like automation and sharing, you can go in and move mods around units and get previews of what your stats will change without having to go into game and spend credits on doing that. Um, and one of the reasons I developed this tool was because I was trying to run the gas mission to get gas and I needed to create certain very specific stat targets for my units and I was moving mods around and I was spending lots of credits and I was running out of space and I was really frustrated that I had to do that in the game and spend the money and it was tedious and I wanted a tool that I could do that outside of the game have everything be perfect and set up to the perfect turn, turn orders the perfect um, you know, balance of mods between units and then push it into the game. Uh, we've also added features like unit requirements. Um, so you can go in and specify certain stat requirements for units. Say, I want this unit to be over 300 speed. I want this unit to use a crit avoidance arrow. I want this unit to have an offense set on it. And Playground through its editor will highlight when a unit doesn't meet those requirements. So 
you're able to kind of define what you want your loadout to look like, what how you want your units to be modded, and then you can share that definition uh, with other people in your guild or your alliance. Um, those requirements are called loadout definitions. We'll get into that more later. And finally, there's automation. So once you define those um, unit restrictions, you can hit the automate button if you want to, and it will try to find the best set for you based on the weights that you set for the units. So let's just go ahead and jump into Playground, take a look at some of the features, and the first thing you'll probably notice when you use Playground are the views. Um, there are two views, um, advanced and basic. Uh, I believe the default view is basic here, and you'll see a list of units uh, in what we call cards. Um, this is probably the view that most people will want to use. Uh, you can switch views by clicking on the advanced. Both views will allow you to do quite a bit of functionality and get at quite a bit of different features of the tool. Uh, the advantage to advanced is that you can see what mods are currently assigned to characters. Uh, the advantage to basic is you get to see more units at a higher level glance and that you can also reprioritize units by dragging and dropping their cards into different locations. We'll get in that, into that in more detail later, but I think most people typically use the basic view and I would suggest using that for most of of your usage within the tool. You might want to pop over into advanced to kind of see what units currently have, what their stats are. Uh, you can scroll up and down. This is kind of more of a summary or overview view, but basic is your typical view. All right, so let's show you some of the basic functions of Playground. Say you wanted to manually remod a unit, uh, change a couple mods on them, save that as a loadout and push it into the game. How do you do that through Playground? Um, this is your basic view that we've showed before. Um, let's say Lord Vader is a unit that we want to change. Um, and we go ahead and we click on, what you would do is you'd click on the little edit button right here. This would bring up the unit sheet. We're going to go over a lot of the different features here later. But basically if you want to jump right into the manual remodding, you click on the mod themselves. And this will bring up the manual remod page. Um, the major areas are up here on the top. This is, these are the mods that are currently assigned to the unit. Here are the stats that that would give the unit. And then here are the mods uh, that you can select to add to the unit. So let's say we wanted to change um, this triangle right here. Um, we wanted to get something a little bit faster for him. Uh, or we wanted to add, we wanted him to use a protection triangle. So I would click on the triangle. Um, I find a mod that I liked better. I'd click on that. I get a preview of how the stats would change for him. And let's say I like this. This uh, this is this is what I want to switch this mod for. I would go ahead and click lock. That would assign this mod to this unit. And then I would go ahead and click back. And now my Vader has been remodded. Let's say I also want to change Kenobi. So I go ahead and click on this edit button for Kenobi and then I click on the manually edit mods and let's say I want to change his diamond. Now one of the things you'll see is that Lord Vader's mod has a different color background and what we did in the tool is we highlight mods that are currently assigned to units that are higher in the priority unit level than you're currently looking at. So because Lord Vader was higher in my priority order and this mod is currently assigned to him, I should know to stay away from that. Or I might be stripping mods from units that are higher in the priority order. Now I can filter that out by going here and say filter used mods. Uh, we'll get into these features a little bit more later, but let's say I like this mod better for him. I go ahead and lock Kenobi, go back, uh, now I can go into my advanced mode and check out the two changes that I've made. You'll see that um, the mods that are changed are highlighted a different color. Uh, you'll see the stat differences that occur on these two units. And let's say I'm good. I like these two changes. We're going to ignore the fact that 
we're stripping mods from two other units and we're, we want to save this as a loadout and click file and then under save as I title this as demo and as a category let's just call this test I'll go ahead and save and now when I go to loadouts over here I have a loadout called test and if I clicked on load and push this to the game it would push those mod updates so I went really fast over the manual editor uh, screen let's take a little bit more time go into different uh, sections of that and to talk about some of the more advanced features that that has so um, let's pop into the manual editor for Kylo um, I'm gonna click on the edit button I'm gonna click on the edit mods and let's take a look at the area um, this button obviously is to go back to your main screen uh, this button locks whatever mods you have currently in your session uh, it saves it uh, if I were to change mods here and then just try to go back, it would say that pending save changes have not been saved. Do you want to continue? And this is where you can discard your pending save changes or you can save and return. So here I'll click cancel. Um, I do have some pending changes. Uh, let's say I don't like all the pending changes that I have. I can go ahead and click the undo button and that would go back to whatever was in the loadout or whatever was in the session that I was working on. Um, there's also an automate button. I'll talk about automate more in the automate section, but this is going to automate the mods for this one unit. Um, and that plays into the unit restrictions and loadout definition that we'll talk about later. And finally, we have uh, a button called import set. Now import set, if I click this, it allows me to pull mods from a unit that's in game or allows me to pull, pour, pull mods from a unit that is in another loadout that I have. Uh, so I could say, you know, I want to mod uh, Grievous, uh, I want to mod um, SLKR like Grievous because for whatever mission I'm running, I want him to have really high health. So I could say, I'm, I'm going to pull the in-game mods uh, for General Grievous. I'll talk, type that here. It previews what mods he currently has assigned to him and I could just hit load and then that would just assign the mods that were assigned to General Grievous in-game to him. Um, you can also pick from another loadout that maybe you've made earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. This is going to go back to uh, the mods that SLKR has in-game um, and we're going to continue to take a look at this. These buttons will um, navigate through units. It'll go previous and next. Um, in case you're, um, you want to do one unit at a time, it's kind of a convenience button there. Over here we have filters, um, and this is one of the features that Playground has that um, I find a lot more useful uh, than is what in game because it allows me to filter the mods and be specific. I can click on this and I can select the slot that I want, or I can select, select the set. Um, but I can select more than one set. So I can select speed and let's say health. And then I can select the primaries uh, per uh, slot. So I could say for his circle, I want health. And I could say for his arrow, I want speed and also consider offense. And for the triangle, let's say I want crit damage. And for the cross, I want offense. Uh, this is, I think, better than in game because in game when you're filtering uh, mods you have to select only one primary to filter at a time so you you might have to you know put the filter on for your cross you pick the cross then you go back to the filter and then you pick the filter for the triangle and then you go back and you pick the filter for the arrow this allows you to specify the filters you want for each slot and also by set uh, then we can go ahead and click um, apply and that'll save it. Um, you can also uh, specify um, what primaries must be there. So let's say that I want every single mod to have speed on it and I also want every single mod, um, I want it to only filter mods that have um, offense percent on it. Uh, now I'll put a note about this. If a mod, even though this says secondary right here, 
if a mod has that stat as a primary, it will also be uh, considered part of the filter. So if you select speed secondary as a filter here, it will still continue to show um, arrows that have speed as a primary. And also it will continue to show crosses that have offense percent. Um, you can also specify what, second, what secondary stats to exclude to. Um, so let's go ahead and go this, I'll click apply. And now you will, you'll see that every single mod I have here has speed secondary and an offense percent. You'll see all of my triangles are either health or speed and they have crit damage. Um, you'll see that all of my triangles have offense uh, secondaries. Um, so I can use this to, to filter down, but not have to continually pop into and out of my filtering screen. Um, this button right here, uh, I talked really briefly about it in the, in the last section, but I can filter out mods that were used by units higher in the priority list. So you can see that triangle right there. It's really high in my list, but it's used by General Kenobi, who's higher in the priority list. Let's say I just don't show me any mods that are higher in the priority order because I don't want to steal them. I could click this and that Kenobi mod goes away. Another feature is simulate a 6 So let's say you want to see what the mods would look like if you slice them to 6 um, For instance, this TIE Fighter Pilot mod here um, is 14 speed, it, but you want to see what the rest of the stats would look like. If you click this, it kind of simulates all the mods as what they would look like as 6 Now, um, it doesn't simulate roles for you, but it converts all the stats that are there up to 6 um, and that's sometimes useful if you want to see on the left hand side here what this mod would look like if I sliced it to 60 and what effect that would have on the stats. Uh, it's kind of a need to play around with that, but we'll turn that off. All right. Uh, the next um, section is our sorting section. So by default, the mods are sorted by their weight. Um, and the weights we'll talk when we get into automation, but it's how good of a match do we think this uh, mod is for this unit? Um, but you can change that easily and sort mods by um, all of the filters that we have down here. So let's say I want to sort the mods by speed. You know, that obviously changes it. I get my fastest mods at the top, slowest mods at the bottom. Um, we have a field here that's not in game called offense total. So what does offense total do? Offense total will actually take the offense percent and the offense flat that is on that mod, it will calculate what effect that, that those two stats have on this specific character and sort them by what will increase their offense by the total amount more. So you don't have to do calculations on, well, this one has uh, you know, a higher percent, but this one has a higher flat offense, which one is going to give me more total? You can just sort by offense total, and this mod right here is going to give me the highest amount total offense boost of all the mods that I have here. Um, we have that for health as well. You'll we get the total health because health has percent health and flat health. Um, we have offense percent, you can sort by offense. Um, there's another field here called effective hit points. Um, and effective hit points is basically your hit points and your pr protection times your defense. Um, there's a great video by a guy who used to play the game called Bulldog where he talked about, you know, how does defense factor into uh, your actual survivability of the unit. And this does a calculation which basically says which of these mods make this unit uh, the most survivable. Now, defense penetration and other things come into play, but this is a calculation which shows you basically which mods are uh, the most, have the most effective hit points. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a cool tool to use, especially if you're trying to mod tanks and you're just trying to get them as much survivability as possible. Um, and we break that down into effective hit points and protection. If you also want to uh, sort by effective health. So if you don't like care about protection, you can sort by that. This one will give health times defense. And there's also effective protection, which gives you protection times defense. Um, 
but you have sorting features for almost every stat that you can you can think of. Um, here, this strength number right here is the total strength um, of this set that you have currently selected based on the weights. We'll get into the weights uh, when we talk about automation. And we have the stats. Um, this is gonna be um, the, uh, the difference in, in stats that, that the unit will have once you remod it. Uh, there's also a button down here for manage. Um, a lot of times when people are manually remodding, they see a mod, they're like, oh, this would be great, um, but it's level 12, um, I'm gonna forget to slice this mod up. So what you can do is you can click the manage button here um, and you can upgrade it to the max level by clicking this button. Um, and you can also end up slicing this mod to 60 if you want to. And this will give you the changes that will occur to this mod if you slice it to 60. Um, there's different view, view modes here for the mods. Um, you'll see these percentages here. What does that mean? What do those percentages mean? That's roll quality. Roll quality tells you, you know, of the four rolls that happened, what was the quality of that roll? Um, so this is 100%. And what that tells you is that this one roll of defense was a really high roll of that of defense. Um, and speed was pretty high. 10 is pretty high. And it's because technically you can get a roll of six. So two rolls would be a max of 12 and I think a minimum of six. So it falls at about 62% roll quality in there. It kind of gives you an idea of the quality of the rolls that you're getting. Um, you can also mark mods to slice later, and that has integration with our uh, mod management section. So if you see a mod that you think, oh, this is gonna be great to slice, um, you can mark it as slice later, and then go into mod management and slice the mod from there if you don't wanna slice it from here. So let's take a look at included units next. That's an important concept to understand. By default, when you go to Playground, all units are included in the loadout that you are creating. Uh, but you can create loadouts that only have a small subset of units or have all of them at once. Um, for instance, let's say you wanted to create a loadout to run in LSTP. You wouldn't want to have all your units be in that loadout. Because if you did, then applying that loadout every time you ran LSTP would be incredibly expensive. So let's look at how you can add five units and exclude everything else. Uh, there's a couple ways to add and remove individual units. In the basic view, you can click on the checkbox to remove units one at a time or add them. And in the advanced view, you can also click on the checkbox to add and remove units one at a time. On the toolbar, there's also buttons for add and remove. Uh, by hovering over the button, you can remove all visible units or you can remove all units completely. Let's go ahead and remove all units and then only add the five units that I want to create my loadout definition. So I might want General Kenobi, Padme, R2-D2, General Skywalker, and Let's add Commander Ahsoka Tana. Now I have five units in my current working loadout definition. If I go to save that by clicking on file, you'll see now that only the five units that I had selected will come up as default when I save. One other thing to note is that you can filter and only show the included units that you're working on. That's this button up here. INC. So if I click on that, only the five units that are included are shown in the current working workspace. I can also add all my units back by clicking add all. And there is a advanced button to remove units. Right now, we can specify units that only have gear levels of a certain level or lower. So let's say I want to remove all units that have gear level 10 or less. Click OK. And then as I scroll down to the bottom, you see units that have a lower gear level are now excluded. 
So I'm gonna add these back in. Now, the, under the drop downs for add and remove, you'll see add visible and remove visible. What those do is it will remove whatever filter you currently have applied and we'll go into filters later. So let's go ahead, for instance, and look at the 501st and I'm going to remove visible. If I go back and now select all units, you'll see that only the 501st has been removed. This is probably more useful if you want to create a loadout only for 501st. So what you can do is remove all units. You can then select 501st and then you can add visible. Then when you go back to displaying all units, you'll see clearly that only the 501st are included. And now I can use my filter up here to only show 501st included units. One other thing to point out is that when you're looking at existing loadouts that you have and you click the edit button, that will bring you directly into Playground. But the included button will be automatically checked. So something that has thrown people off is if they have a loadout that is their entire baseline and they click edit, you might not see new units that have been have been added to the game since you created this loadout. Uh, for instance, if a new marquee comes out that you unlock, you may look for that unit and not be able to see it. The reason is because it wasn't in the loadout you created and you're filtering only on showing included units. Okay, let's talk quickly about filters because that can be one of the most useful features that you have uh, when manually modding or automated modding lots of units in your entire roster. Filters are available in the upper right hand corner for units. Uh, if you scroll down a little, you'll see all the factions listed. You can select the faction whose units you want to see um, and switch that easily. Uh, at the very top is all units and that gets rid of all the filters. There's also a handful of custom filters that we've created that make it easier to mod your entire roster, uh, make it more efficient. That, uh, things that you wouldn't see in game. Uh, one of the most important ones is missing mods. So if a unit doesn't have all six mods, you kind of want to identify which uh, units those are. And that's especially important as you're going through and remodding units and stealing mods off one unit, you kind of want to get a list of, okay, what are all the units that I've grabbed mods for? Uh, so let's go ahead and do Lord Vader, for instance. I'm going to grab two mods. First one I'm going to grab is off Bad Batch. Echo, and then let's grab the second one off of Jedi Master Luke. I'll select him here, and then I'll lock it. So now these two units have their mods stolen, and I want a quick and efficient way to identify that. I can go ahead and in the filter, see units with mis missing mods, and I can go ahead and fix those. And then if I steal units from the from you to complete those units, the, the units that I steal from them will appear in, in this list. It's a dynamic filter. A um, couple other ones that are really useful to use uh, is the uh, broken filter. Uh, if we select that and go into the advanced view, these are units that don't have the maximum number of sets completed on them. Uh, so Jedi Master Luke, it's obvious he's missing a mod, so he's got a broken set. Um, but Hermit Yoda, here's, here's a good example. He's got a completed speed set, but his offset um, is not completed because he's using crit damage and offense. So if you're trying to make the most of your completed sets, this is a quick way to see which units have broken sets and which ones don't. Uh, there's also a filter for illegal mods. So if you have any mods that are 6E assigned to a unit that isn't gear 12, that'll show up. Uh, Changed uh, will show you all the units that are changed from in-game. So if you're editing an existing loadout and you want to see what's the difference than what I have in game, you want to see what the, the, the changes are, you can use that very quickly. Um, and finally, a, a great one to use is the need leveling mod. The need leveling mod will show you all the characters who have mods on them that aren't level 15. So you can quickly see these are units that don't have level 15 mods. And one important thing to point out, and I'll probably talk about this when we get into automation also, is that all the automation assumes mods are at level 15. So 
when you go through the tool and you mod everything and everything looks good, you then probably want to go into need leveling and make note of which units you need to level their mods to level 15 to get the actual stats that you're seeing through Playground. Um, you can do that in the game. You could also do that in Playground like I showed earlier. You can just click on their mods and go to the manual modding screen, select the mod that needs leveling, click manage, and then go ahead and upgrade to max level right here. And you can use that to quickly level all the, all the units that have level 15 mods if you want to do that. Um, there's also, we added recently integration with mod ma management filters into these filters, which is really cool. Uh, so if you want to, for instance, see all the units that have uh, a very specific type of mod. So let's, uh, let's say I want to find all units that have speed set mods that are less than uh, 10 speed. Um, I can go to mod management and I'm not going to go over mod management. Hopefully you're familiar with that, but I'm going to create a filter for that. Um, I'm going to click create new filter. Um, I'm going to give this a name as slow speed set mods. Um, uh, maybe I'm going to put this in garbage mods and then I'm going to add a new filter. I'm going to say speed set and then I'm going to select everything but the arrows. I'm just going to call this slow speed. Um, and what I'll say is that their stats uh, speed is uh, less than 10. Okay, so this creates a filter that's in mod management, but I'll also be able to use that filter in playground. I go into playground and I scroll to the very bottom um, of the filters. I now have a filter that will show me all the slow speed set mods. So I can see here, you know, okay, here, right here, my dash render has a speed set mod with an eight speed. Um, that's why he showed up. My Colonel Stark has a speed set mod with a nine speed. So I can quickly identify all the units that have a certain type of mod on them. Uh, and we've also added the, the custom uh, garbage group. So or the garbage category. So all the mods that show up in your garbage category of mod management will show up um, in this filter. So if you spend a lot of time setting up mod management, kind of identifying mods that you want to get rid of and cycle out of your roster, you can come out in here, you know, find which mods are garbage on which units, and then you can replace them. We showed it briefly when we went to save our loadout earlier in the tutorial. Let's talk a little bit more about the file menu and some of the options that are available there. Um, after I've done my modding, I've got everything the way that I want it. Um, I've assigned all the mods, everything looks good. You then wanna create a loadout that you can push to the game through the loadout section. So that's done through uh, the file tab. And then within the file tab, you have three sub tabs uh, for saving as, opening a, a loadout and creating an image. So when saving, uh, you can obviously you give it a loadout name and a category. Um, categories are used for filtering in the loadouts tab. Um, so if you want to create a filter maybe for LSTV, one for uh, dark side territory battles, maybe one for full rosters, you can do that. Um, you can also give it a full description. This is only for your benefit when you're looking if you create lots of loadouts and you want to remember what the difference is between them. Um, there is a toggle here on whether you want to include all the characters in the loadout. If they are included when you're editing, this check marks will already be checked by default. If we went in here and we unchecked the character and then went to the file save as screen, um, this option would not be checked and all the units that are included would be checked here. Uh, but you can manually choose which units you want to include when you save the loadout and which ones you don't. Uh, I suggest that you um, do your inclusion through these check marks here and then when you go to save, you just review which units you want to include. And if it is a full roster loadout, check this. But it's pretty easy um, to remove units if you don't want to include them. You can just click here, 
they'll be unhighlighted. You'll see the total number of characters selected here uh, decrease as you select more characters. Um, but if you want to go ahead and use all characters, you can just use this toggle right here. Uh, there's an option on whether you want to include modless units in loadouts. Uh, we used to have a lot of people ask for, for that ability in order to decrease GP during, uh, I think it was uh, territory wars. I don't think people are doing that quite as often anymore. Um, and there's also the option to include the loadout definition in the loadout. Um, this isn't probably going to be used that often, but if you're using a remodding service and the person who's remodding your roster um, wants to keep their, their modding information secret, they can use this and they can create a loadout for you, but not give you any of the metadata about that loadout. So uh, all the, the speed requirements and the set requirements, they can not include in the loadout uh, and just give you the actual mods and the units that are assigned to them. Um, this one, saved lock unit status in loadout, is pretty much what it says. Uh, when I go to these units and I remod them manually and lock them, uh, the mods that are assigned to that unit will not be taken off that unit because that unit's locked during automation. Uh, if you want that lock status to be remembered every single time you use this loadout, you can select to save lock status in the loadout. And the final option is push to game. Um, I don't recommend that. Uh, if you're only changing a few mods here and there, you can try it. My recommendation is to save the loadout and then go into the loadouts section and try to push it to game. This push to game, it doesn't have the data needed to know whether or not you have the mod space or the credits in order to push it into the game. So it will, but it will attempt to. Um, if it's a small change and you want to get it into game quickly, you don't want to go into the loadouts component. Um, but my suggestion and the way I use it is mostly to create a loadout, um, go into the loadouts component and then push it to game. But it should be fine to use uh, small changes to your roster if you only want to change one or two mods or may maybe you're quickly um, remodding a single team for, for an assault battle or maybe a galactic challenge or something like that. Um, open loadout is really straightforward. These are all the loadouts that you have created before. Uh, you can go ahead and just click load here um, and it will load the loadout that you've saved earlier. Um, you can also get to the same uh, view by going into the loadout screen here and clicking the edit button on any of these. So I can go ahead, this is my um, this is my uh, Jedi Master Kenobi Bad Batch that I some, sometimes run in LSTD. If I click edit, um, I can quickly see what the mods are when I push this into the game. Um, I can go into the advanced mode, kind of look at the changes that I make um, and, and edit that and change it if need be. Um, the final tab under file is called image. Um, and that is cool because it will generate an image, a shareable image of the modded units in this loadout. Uh, if there are, I want to say either five or nine units or less units, you can click generate image and then it will open a new tab with the units and the mods that you have assigned to them. Um, you can show this off to people if you're running a special mission and things work and you want to share it with them. Or if you're doing a lot of uh, remodding for something like the cam mission for members of your guild, and let's, there is a way to actually open their rosters and playground to remod it. And then if you want to share it with them, you can come in here, generate an image, send them this link right here and say, hey, go and make your uh, modding roster look like this. So um, the generate image is mostly when you're trying to create a single team modding strategy for um, guildmates. Let's talk about the review tab. There's not a whole lot there, but let's go over the capabilities of it. Um, the review tab is going to show you a summary of what the modding session changes you have are and what and you can compare them to either game or another loadout. So let's say I go ahead and I want to change uh, Lord Vader's mods. I'm going to select a, a couple different ones here. I'm going to lock that. 
and now I can do review. And what I get here is for every unit, I get the mods that they currently have assigned to them. And then on the right hand side, I get the mods that will be assigned to them if I push this uh, loadout or these changes to the game. I also get the stat differences. So I can uh, scroll through this, I can see every single unit, all the changes that will be made and the stats that will be changed. You can also choose what to compare this with. By default, it's gonna come up and compare it with what's in game, but you can choose another loadout to um, compare it with. Uh, let's say, for instance, you know, my LSTB cam. You know, obviously this loadout is only for my um, Shock 501st, so these units have no mods, so you're gonna see a difference here. But if you're doing a, maybe like a, if you're re trying to create a new cam loadout and you want to compare it to your old cam loadout, you can select that to compare it to. Um, the push mods button, like under the file menu, will try to push this to the game. Again, if you're having issues with this, I suggest you, tr you go into file, save, create a loadout, and then go into the loadouts component over here and try to push it to the game. Um, this is useful if you're doing small modding changes and uh, you want to push it directly in game after reviewing it. Before we go ahead and get into automation, it's important to understand uh, unit prioritization and the options that are available there. So let's take a look at that. Um, this is going to be configurable in the basic mode. You're not gonna be able to change and edit the prioritization order in the advanced mode. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. In the advanced mode, you're really only seeing one unit or maybe like one and a half units at a time. When you go into the basic mode, you can see many of the units at a time. Um, at its simplest, um, you can change unit prioritization by dragging and dropping the units. So I can just move Ray up here. I can move General Grievous here um, and their priority order will change uh, based on that. Uh, now, before we talk about some of the advanced prioritization features, where does prioritization come into play? Um, most importantly, it comes into play when you do the automation. Uh, it will mod the first unit first and then go to the second and third. So your highest priority units will get your best mods and then down the line, they'll get uh, the second and third and fourth best mods. Um, it also plays a small uh, effect when you're manually remodding units um, to highlight mods that units that are higher in the priority order are using. So if I go in here to General Kenobi, um, you'll see that Lord Vader mod is highlighted. So, and I can filter uh, to only show mods that are on this unit or below. Uh, so prioritization plays a little part in that. Um, so there are a couple of options to help you with prioritization also. Um, up here on the toolbar is an auto prioritize button and that uses the stat rank tool um, that's very popular in the community that can help you auto prioritize your, uh, your roster. Um, you can select whether you're doing an LSTB, DSTB or arena. Um, I think by default, uh, I select this. If you wanna learn a little bit more about the uh, stack rank tool, you can go to the link that's provided here. Uh, you go ahead and click OK. That's going to make a call to their service and it's going to prioritize the units in the order that kind of matches up with the meta. I find this is an awesome way to kind of start with your priority orders optimization. By default, Playground, when you come into it, will have the units ranked from highest uh, galactic power to lowest. Um, but I find that uh, staff rank does a really good job of getting the really important units up high. Um, if you spend a lot of time getting the priority order the way that you want it and you like it that way, I would suggest that you go here and save order. That way, let's say I like this order, it's going to tell me it's going to override my default. Um, but let's say that I play around with it in another session, I do a bunch of things and I decide, eh, I don't really like the changes that I made. I want to get back to the priority order that I have. You can select restore order and it's going to go back to what it was when you saved it. Um, if you set um, stat targets based on required speed in your units, and we'll go over the requirements later, 
you can order the priority by the required speed. So the units that need the most speed to hit their requirement would be high in the priority order and the units that require the least amount of speed or don't have any speed requirement at all would be lower in the priority order. While we're talking about views and kind of uh, getting familiar with the look and feel of Playground, uh, let's talk about another feature called Squad View that we have available. Um, if you go into Playground here, uh, in the upper right hand corner next to the filter is a button um, that will toggle you into Squad View. So the view that you're looking at right now is the prioritization view where you just have all the units and they're in prior priority order, highest to lowest priority. Um, but we added the ability to uh, group units into squads. Uh, I found when I was remounting my entire roster, I kind of wanted to do one squad at a time or one group of, of units that were related to each other at a time. So I added this ability to create squads in Playground. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button and we're going to go into squad mode and you can see um, by default here, uh, I don't have any squads. Um, but let's go ahead and there are a couple different ways to get units into squads. Um, the quickest way is to go ahead and click the edit button here and then go down here to the squad tab and you'll give this squad a name. So let's say I call this my JMK squad. I'll go ahead and click OK. And now um, Jedi Master Kenobi is under the JMK squad. I can um, very easily add units to this squad by dragging them in here um, and I can still use the filters up in the upper right hand corner so I can filter by uh, let's say Galactic Republic and let's say I want to add um, Ahsoka and maybe Pepper here and then I'll go back to all units I'm still in the squad view let's say I want to create my um, SLKR squad um, there's another way to create squads, and that is by clicking this plus squad button here. Um, <clears throat> and I got a couple options here. Um, I can create the squad by setting the squad name here, SLKR, and I can do Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, and then I can find um, maybe Kylo Ren on mass. Now I can do all the units in the squad if I want, or I can only add one of them and then um, drag and drop the rest if I want to. So I got these two and then maybe I want to go into my uh, first order filter and um, I can put this in here. Yeah, let's see, I want first order officer. Uh, now one thing to note is that the filtering still does apply to the squads that you're looking at. So. Uh, Sith Trooper is a Sith unit, so if, if I went ahead and did a filter by Sith, it's going to show Sith Trooper in here. This isn't showing the full SLKR team, it's showing the SLKR squad units that are still in the Sith filter. Um, so keep that in mind when you're using this. Um, what does squads do? What effect does that have? It actually has absolutely no effect on the automation any of the tools, any of the modding, it's purely for organization of units uh, in Playground when you're doing remodding. It's, it's just a user interface enhancement, doesn't affect um, anything else in game. It just, all it does is it groups units in a nice way so that you can edit them um, quickly. Um, by grouping them like this, if I go ahead and I click the edit button here um, and the next unit and previous unit buttons will cycle through the units that are in that squad. And that what, that's what I found useful. Um, if you don't have squads and everything is in the priority order and you're kind of trying to bounce between units in the same squad that you're, you're modding at once, um, you can't really do that. But by using the squad grouping, you can go back and forth easily. Um, you'll, say he, you'll see here that there is a button to export the definition. Um, I'm going to talk about that later when I get into requirements and uh, and settings and loadout definitions, uh, but it also allows you to kind of create requirements for the squad and then easily export just the squad to a loadout definition, uh, which is uh, pretty useful. 
Um, the other way to add it in the squad is to import the squad from um, the squad section over here in the tool. So I've, I've created a bunch of, of units. Uh, let's save my Mon Mothma squad. I can select that and I just click OK. And then if I go to Rebels, you'll see that it imported my Mon Mothma squad uh, automatically for me. So that's a nice way to, if you want to define all your squads here and just pull them into uh, Playground at once, use that integration together. There's also a couple of different ways you can sort units. So let's talk about those briefly. Um, the sorting mode is up here in the upper right hand corner. Uh, if I click on that, I get a couple of different methods to sort units by. By default, it's going to sort them by the priority order, but you can also sort them by current speed. So I'll go ahead and click that. My units are resorted by speed. Now, one thing to note is that when you are in the any sort mode that isn't priority order, you cannot reprioritize units. I can move it and drag it, but it'll just snap it back into the normal order. The only order that you can actually change the priority order in is the priority sort order. Uh, behavior outside of that sort order, uh, dragging and dropping is ignored. Um, so that's the current speed. Uh, that that is kind of useful if you if you have used the squad capability kind of a little bit maybe gives you uh, maybe turn order of those units not a hundred percent but let's go ahead and um, add a squad here um, I showed that's in the um, previous uh, section but I have my Mon Mothma squad and then I sort by their current speed um, and I get the, the fastest units at the top and the slowest units at the bottom kind of gives me a turn order idea of the squad. Now, um, units a lot of times will get speed bonuses with unique and other factors, but um, it does give you maybe a high level idea of like uh, how fast each unit is and, and where they will go. Um, you can also sort by um, the plus speed, so that's um, just what mods uh, they have and, and how much it's adding. So this gives you a good idea of seeing like where all your good mods are. You know, I'm putting my fastest mods on these units that are at the top. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, my, my you know, lowest plus speed mods are on them. Um, similar to the plus speed mod sorting capability is the plus speed with the set bonus not included. So this is going to sort them by the um, speed secondary uh, improvements that you have. And then you can also sort by the minimum required speed um, that the units have. So when we start talking about the uh, requirements, if you want to show which units require the most speed to be added to them, uh, you can sort by that method too. Um, these are all outside of priority are all just visual indicators to the tool. They don't change anything. They just help you identify units uh, quicker and easier. If you're still watching this video for whatever reason, maybe you like remodding rosters or maybe you uh, get paid to remod mo rosters, you might want to consider remodding an allies roster or helping them. There are a couple ways to do that in Playground. I'll show that uh, now in a second. The first way and kind of the most um, uh, su suggested way, the, the cleanest integration is to have your, if, if your ally is also a Hot Utils user, is to have them grant you read-only access to um, their account. And then you can log in to their account in Hot Utils. It's without, with just seeing their Hot Utils data, you won't be able to do anything in, to ga in the game with it. So what you can do is you can come here to player uh, sharing section and you can add the user's discord tag and then you can uh, select limited usage and click add user. So this is what your, your, your friend would do. They would add you as a limited user to their account. Um, and what that would allow you to do is, is log in as a guest to their account, remod their roster, create a loadout. Um, you wouldn't be able to push anything to game, you wouldn't be able to do any actions in game, but you'd be able to create a hot utils loadout for them, and then they can go into the game and push it into game. Um, 
If you are running a remodeling service and you're watching this video, I really like that idea because uh, people can use your remodeling service and they can give you limited access to their account. You can create the loadout for them um, and they never have to give you uh, their username and password. You can, you can just create them this loadout. You can say, here it is. Um, push it into game and you're done and they've never given you their username and password that that's uh, handled you know through the hot utils uh, connection so it's a much more secure way and hopefully you can get a little bit more business if you um, don't have to get the username and password from the user so once they do that once they grant you the limited access um, when you log in or when you click this in the upper right hand corner you can do an account select you will get uh, another account that has granted you access you can click on that now i'm going to lo log into uh, a friend of mine's account right now and now i'm looking at the account as if i was logged in with him i can go into playground here um, and i can use playground remod his roster and then i can do file and save it as and then when he logs into his account it's going to show up that loadout that i created will show up in his um, in his loadouts section. So that's one way to do it. Uh, if they have hot utils and they grant you access. If they don't have hot utils, um, you can go in here uh, under open loadout. You can click ally and you can enter an ally code and then click load. And that will load their account um, into the hot utils session. And you can use all the capabilities. Uh, the only limitation to that is that since it's not an active hot utils connection, you won't be able to see their unequipped mods. You'll only be able to see their equipped mods. Um, and you won't be able to save a loadout for them. You can just play around with it. Um, sometimes that's very useful if you're trying to create a cam loadout for someone. If you saw the other section, um, you can, you know, maybe mod five units uh, under, under their account, and then you can go under image and um, select to generate an image of those cam units and it will create a link that you can then share with them. Uh, so the two ways to kind of get into someone's account is to do, you know, file, open loadout, select ally, um, or to have them go in under the player section and um, do sharing for you. Um, the other way, if, if you're doing this a lot for guildmates, um, you can quickly uh, switch to a guildmate account. Let me go back to um, my account right here. I'll show you how to do that. We have a, a nice uh, link. Um, I can go under guild and then I can go under overview and you have a link to playground of browse mods here. So I can find somebody who's in my um, in my guild if I want to remod their roster. Um, let's say I want to do space milk. I click on her, her mods here and this comes up. It's pulling all the mods that uh, this guild mate of mine has fetching the player's data. Now this has their units, it has their mods. Um, this is also not going through a connection, so I won't have the unequipped mods, but um, I could remod, you know, the the, the, the cam mission. Um, and then I could, you know, let's say I wanna go ahead and remove all. Um, then I want to do uh, Galactic Republic. I want to do shock and I want to do the 501st. Okay. And then I would go through maybe uh, remod here. And then if I wanted to share a picture with my guildmate, I could go file image, generate image. And then I could give them this link. And this is a link that has how they should mod their roster for the cam mission. Um, if you zoom in here, um, it has little pictures of the units that the mod's currently on. So they can kind of see, oh, I need to grab this uh, uh, square from Dark Revan and the diamond from Bad Batch. So um, those are a couple different ways to mod other people's rosters. You can choose which, which one fits the situation that you're doing. The last sec section I'll show, and it's not directly laid related to Playground, but I think it um, comes up a lot when people use Playground, is how to push big changes to the game. Um, one of the things ha that happens to people is they'll remod in Playground, 
um, they'll create a loadout, then they'll go into their loadouts component and it'll tell them they have to sell, you know, 80 mods in order to get it into the game. And it's overwhelming and they say, okay, I'm not gonna do this. They walk away from Playground um, because there's no way they're gonna clear up that much mod space. Um, we've developed some tools to help with that, um, not completely solve the problem, but I'll talk about them real briefly and, and show you how to use them. Um, if you go into the loadouts component, um, up here in the upper right hand corner, there are, um, there's a button called split and there's a button called fill. Um, the split button allows you to take a loadout and to split it into multiple smaller loadouts. Um, so I'm going to click split and let's say that star killer base is, is my, um, main loadout. I'm going to select my main loadout. This is the, the new one that I'm, I'm going to use. Um, and I select the number of units that I want in the splits. Um, you would probably select a, a, a small number, like maybe 10, maybe five, depending on how much mod space you have. The, the, the less mod space you have, the smaller you, this number is. If you have a decent amount of mod space, you can pick a higher number. Um, you know, just because I, I don't want to create a ton of splits, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select 50, you know, that way with 189 units, it's only gonna uh, create four splits for me. But you're gonna wanna keep it some something closer, maybe 10, maybe five. Um, I'll go over this button in a second, but I go ahead and you click the split button and then it's going to create splits for you. Um, and now what you'll see is instead of having one massive loadout, I have lots of smaller loadouts that I can deal with. And the, the number of free mod spaces that they need are going to be less um, because, uh, you know, it might be impossible for me to push a full baseline remod, but if I have splits of, of five units, I might be able to, to push a couple of those to the game. Um, so let's say I did this, you know, maybe sometimes you create 20 or 30 um, of these splits and you find two of them that you can push to the game and you kind of you load them to the game and then those two get loaded, but now you're full again. You don't have any more space. Um, then you can use the fill button. And what the fill button does is it basically takes every unit that has empty mod slots and it shows um, mods on them as intelligently as it can. So I would go in here, I select, you know, what's my loadout I want to focus on, and then here I would I would select my Star Killer base again, um, and I would just go ahead and click fill. And what that's going to do is it's going to just shove, you know, as many mods as it can into empty spots. After I do that, one of my other splits should then be pushable to the game, or maybe two or three are. So I push you know, the next two or three that are that are um, able to get pushed to the game. When that's done, I'd click fill again. That would shove mods into empty slots. And it's a process of, you know, filling and then pushing the split that you have available and filling and pushing the split available. Um, it's a little bit of a tedious process, but it will help you get there eventually. Um, you know, uh, it, it takes some time, but it is an option to, to get, get you there. Um, there is one experimental option that um, you can try, um, which is the auto load splits option, uh, which will, what it will do is it will do that action for you. It'll split the, the loadout into uh, 10 units per loadout, for instance. It will find as many loadouts as it can apply to game. And once it runs out of space, it will then do a fill and then it will go through and try to push as many to game until it runs out of space and then it'll do another fill. Um, this is, uh, you know, we're currently working on the um, stability of this, um, but you can try it. it. Once we get it up and running, it should be a really nice feature to use. Another thing to note is that the cost that it has is going to obviously be a lot higher than if you were to push that loadout just by itself because doing the fills is going to shove mods onto units uh, that have open slots and those those mods that are being shoved on units with open slots aren't always the mods that they'll end up getting at the end so um, this is a convenient 
feature that allows you to get big roster remonds into the game, but you are going to spend a little bit more on the credit side. You know, suggestions always to try to keep your mod inventory as free as you can. Um, but the options there, a lot of people use this uh, to do their big uh, roster remonds um, and, and get their changes into game. All right, so I think I showed all of the basic features of Playground. Um, after we talk about this a little bit, we're gonna go into loadout definitions and loadout definitions get into some of the really advanced um, complex features that we have to offer. But I hope that you can see some benefits of using Playground if, even if you don't get into those advanced features at all. Um, one of the benefits is that you can view the contents of a loadout uh, created in hot utils so if you created a baseline two months ago and you and you want to see okay what are the units and what are the mods that were associated to them you can go into the loadouts component you can click edit and you can just see this is the contents of my loadout um, even if you don't don't want to use playground to do remodding at all playground at least shows you what is in your loadout uh, the second advantage that i see uh, to playground is that it allows you to remod units without spending credits and having to worry about mod space. Uh, when I do this in game, um, I'm just spending credits, pulling mods off of units, remodding one unit, and then popping back and moving uh, mods to another unit. And I can't go back and forth without spending credits and hitting that mod wall. In the Playground application, you can do all that remodding um, on the web page. And then when you're done and you have, okay, this is what I want my roster to look like, then you can push it to game. You haven't spent anything. Uh, you haven't had to worry about mod cap at all at that point. Like when you push it to the game, you will have to spend credits in it and address um, mod caps, but you can at least get your roster to a point where you want to without having to worry about that issue. Um, you've seen some improved mod filtering. Um, so when you go into the manual uh, modding of a unit, you can set multiple primaries and you can set the primaries per slot. So you can set, you know, I want my triangle to be offense or crit damage. I want my cross to be offense and I want my arrow to be speed. Uh, you don't have to bounce in and out of filtering uh, for every slot that you do when you're remodding a unit. Um, there's also in that manual remodding screen, um, there are some advanced stats that you don't get in game. You get health and protection total. You get the uh, calculations when defense is applied to give you total survivability um, and you get some also really nice features for mod sorting so you can sort mods by uh, the total offense that a mod would apply to the unit it calculates the flat offense amount and the offense percent and gives you which mod will give you the most offense total bonus uh, and there's some also nice features in unit filtering if you want to see uh, what units are missing mods what units have uh, broken sets, um, what units uh, have mods that need leveling. All of those uh, filters are available through Playground. Um, we haven't even touched all the requirements and the automation yet. Um, so I hope that you find some ability and if you play around with Playground, um, can get some use of it, even if you don't go into some of those uh, advanced features. Um, we're gonna start getting into the loadout definitions. That's a pretty complex topic, um, but Please feel free to play around with uh, Playground as is, and if you have any comments or suggestions or questions, uh, the Playground channel of Hot Utils is a great place to um, go through that. And if you stick around for loadout definitions, uh, we're going to talk about some of the really advanced features.